my dear friends, does not ban sports, obviously. It does not say that sports is haram. On the contrary, Islam encourages sports. Islam encourages exercise. We have a hadith that says, teach your children three things. Three things teach them. Number one, horseback riding. Number two, swimming. And number three, sword fighting or th uh, throwing arrows, which is, uh, is it called archery? Archery. Three things that are recommended. Swimming, horseback riding, and archery or sword fighting. Of course, not for violence. Don't, let, don't think that Islam is doing this uh, to encourage violence and to teach our children violence. No, this is exercise. And we, will, we shall mention why. We shall mention why. Out of self-defense. This is one hadith. Another hadith says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُؤْمِنُ الْقَوِيِّ Allah loves a believer that's strong. Not just spiritually strong. Of course, spiritually strong and physically strong. Allah loves a, a believer that's physically strong, physically fit. That is fit. In Rasalat al Hukuk by Imam Zayn al Abidin alayhi salam, he says, Your body has a right on you. Go and exercise. Don't let your body be weak. Your body has a has rights. Go and exercise. Be fit. The Quran says, Qul siru fil ard. Say, walk on earth. The Quran encourages us to walk. This is a form of exercise. Wamshu fi manakibiha wa min And walk in Allah's vast lands and eat from His sustenance. Walk. This is a form of exercise. And the story of Yusuf and Yaqub. The verse that we began with in the beginning of the speech. When the children of Yaqub took Yusuf, they took him for what? They said, we will go, we would like to play sports. قَالُوا يَا أَبَانَا إِنَّا ذَهَبْنَا نَسْتَبِقْ We went to race. We were racing, we were exercising, we were playing sports. Yaqub did not tell them this is haram. This is wrong. These are children of prophets. Children of prophets are exercising. They're playing sports. They're racing. Is this something bad? Of course not. Why does Islam encourage sports and exercise? Three reasons. Three reasons. Number one, to stay fit and to stay healthy. When you exercise and when you play sports, you will be more healthy. You will be more fit you will be able to worship Allah better. Who can worship Allah better? Someone who's tired and his bones hurt him and can barely walk, or someone who's fit, someone who jogs every day, someone who's healthy. Who can worship Allah better? Who can go to Hajj every year and perform Hajj? Those that are old, those that are unhealthy, those who don't exercise, when they go to Hajj, they have a hard time. That is why people that are not fit, not healthy, they have a hard time going to Hajj. While those who are fit and exercise, they enjoy going to Hajj. Because in Hajj, there's a lot of physical activity. They will enjoy it. It's going for ziyarah, walking during the Arba'een from Najaf to Karbala, which has become a tradition now. Many of followers of Ahl Bayt, they go and walk. Who? You have to be fit. If you are not fit, you cannot engage in any of these acts. Praying Salat al-Layl, you have to be fit. You have to be healthy. Otherwise, if you're not fit, if you have to sleep at 10 p.m., you can't stay up, you're not physically fit, you will not be able to pray Salat al-Layl. No, fasting. If you are not physically fit, you cannot fast. If you are ill, if you did not take care of your health, if you didn't exercise, you will not be able to fast. Thus, in order to stay healthy and to worship Allah better. This is one. Number two, self-defense. Self-defense. You never know who will attack you. You will never know who will try to kill you or beat you or stab you. Or maybe sometimes you have an enemy that will attack you personally. And sometimes you have an enemy that will attack your country. Like our countries. Isn't, aren't our countries attacked every day? In Iraq, 
and Afghanistan and Lebanon. Our countries are attacked. Out of self-defense, Islam says be healthy, exercise, learn how to fight with swords, learn how to ride horses. And this was an example, riding horses. Today, if we don't ride horses, if it's not a common exercise, let's do the common exercises of today. If today there's no swords, what other things are there? Use it out of self-defense, not to attack others. Don't get me wrong. Not to attack, not to initiate an attack, but out of self-defense. In Iraq, if our youth had exercised and were in shape and were fit, would we have such massacres like at Camp Spiker when 1,700 Shia youth they were slaughtered and they were beheaded and they were killed? Would we have such a massacre? No, it's because our youth were unfit, unequipped. And when you're unequipped, you lack courage as well. You will lack the courage. But when you're fit, when you're in shape, you also develop the courage to fight your enemy. This is, a, this is a, a point that we have to pay attention to. Number three, Islam encourages us to stay fit, to look good for our spouse, look good for your wife, for your husband, instead of growing berries this, this big, and your wife might ask for a divorce. Islam says remain fit. A wife looks good for her husband, and a husband looks good for his wife. Go and exercise. There are some people that only exercise during the first few years of marriage, but after 10 years, no, everything changes. There's a belly, he starts losing his hair, he doesn't care. They, uh, they just stop caring. The hips, the shoulders, everything multiplies by 10. Islam says be in shape. If you don't do it for yourself, do it for your spouse, do it for your wife. Do it for your husband. This increases the intimacy. This will reduce the amount of divorces in our communities. One of the problems, one of the reasons of divorce is there's, there's no intimacy. There's no attraction between the husband and the wife. There is in the first couple of years, but after 10 years, they're not attracted to each other because they stopped caring. Islam says no, exercise, be in shape, look good for your spouse so that the so that the intimacy remains. Unfortunately, we Middle Easterners, we don't have this culture of exercise. We don't. Here in the West, it exists. I remember when we used to live in the United States, I would wake up at six in the morning to go to university. I would see our neighbor. He was a seven year old man. He would get up and jog in the morning. I was young, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't be in the mood to get up and jog at six in the morning. But a 70 year old man gets up and jogs. Do you see anyone jogging in Iraq? Do you see anyone jogging in Afghanistan at six in the morning? Do you see anyone running? No, the only time they run if they hear about a bomb about to explode, they start running. That's the only time. You don't see them jogging or exercising. 